Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to my channel. To kick things off, I have an incredibly exciting unboxing for you. We are diving into the brand new Lumix GH7 paired with the Leica 12 to 60 mm lens. A little bit about myself. My name is Vincenzo. I'm an international filmmaker and photographer with a passion for capturing unique stories and moments. Over the years, I've had the incredible opportunity to work on a wide variety of sets from commercial shoots and advertisements to film projects and image films for various clients. I've also delved into the world of sports, capturing the intensity of calisthenics and powerlifting and have collaborated with numerous tattoo studios. Additionally, I've worked on several TV shows and films, not only as a director and cameraman, but in some instances also as a stunt double. So I started off with the GH4 over here in 2016. I used it as my workhorse until I upgraded to the GH6 at the end of 2022. And that's also the one which I'm actually filming on right now. The GH6 has been my go-to and absolute beast of a camera. I love it to death. But that camera brings us to today. I got my hands on this beauty right here. I know the camera is out for around a month now, but not here in Germany. For whatever reason, we're always the last to get a piece of the cake. I don't know why that is, but I got my hands on one right as it came out. And I can't tell you how excited I am to unbox the GH7 with you. So let's not waste any more time and get straight to it. All right, first things first, we we're gonna open the box here, open it here and we are presented with a whole bunch of documents about the Lumix Lab app, warranty and a quick start guide. Talking about the Lumix Lab app, we'll get to that in a little bit because this is very exciting new stuff. It's always handy to keep these things around, especially if you're new to the Lumix ecosystem. I think I can manage coming from the GH4 and GH6. So I'm gonna put them to the side for now. Moving on, we're gonna open this flap here and this one and we got a lot of goodies in here. First and foremost, we have the body, the main part, the GH7. Let's put the body to the side for now and let's begin with the accessories. So we have a battery charger in here. See, let me pull it out for you, which connects via USB-C. But what I'm not seeing here in the box is an actual USB-C power cable, which honestly surprises me a little. Um, but it's okay. I mean, for the most time, I'll be rigging the GH7 anyway, and I'll be using a V-mount battery, so I'm not really bothered by that. Additionally, we have also a neck strap with the Lumix logo on top of it, which we are also gonna put to the side. We don't need it for now. Let's put the box to the side and go straight back to the star of the show. And here she is, the Lumix GH7. Wow. I gotta say, she feels fantastic in the hand. The build quality is excellent, as per usual, from uh, Panasonic Lumix. It has a nice weight to it, which makes it feel very solid and uh, durable, you know? And from what I can tell, not only does she look exactly like the GH6, but she also feels exactly like the GH6. So, let's go through it. Like the GH6, the GH7 has a built-in fan, which is over here, to make sure that the camera can continuously shoot and won't overheat. On the other side, if we open that flap here, we have two card slots, one for CF Express Type B and the other for SD cards. Additionally, you can also record your files directly to an SSD via the USB-C port, which is again here on the other side next to the fan. The USB-C port can also be used to charge the camera. We have a full-size HDMI port, a 3.5 millimeter headphone and microphone jack up top, right here. Furthermore, there are two function buttons in the front and one more record button. Moving to the back, we have a fully articulating screen, forward, backwards, that also can flip up into positions. Now to some specs. I'll keep it short and just go real quick over the main specs and exciting updates to the old system. Like all the other cameras from the GH series, the GH7 also has a micro four thirds sensor, which you can see right here. It's a 25 megapixel BSI CMOS sensor. The ISO range is between 100 and 25,600. With this puppy, we can shoot with up to 5.8K at 4x3 open gate. An open gate is really exciting, you guys. That essentially means that the camera uses the whole sensor to record, and this gives us great flexibility in post, as 4x3 
is taller than the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. What does that mean? That means we can get horizontal and vertical shots in the same quality without having to sacrifice quality when trying to create vertical videos out of a 16 by 9 horizontal video due to like digitally zooming in. Like with the J6, we can record in Panasonic's beautiful V-Log, but not only that, with a paid software update, the J7 is even able to record in Airy C log and how cool is that? So I'm actually really pumped and excited about this feature. It's gonna be like a mini RE camera, if you will. And the cool thing is that also applies to the GH6. So you can also purchase the update for the GH6. So I would have like two little um, cinema cameras right there. Another feature is that the GH7 now is able to record ProRes RAW internally. And next up, we have the new autofocus system. Before the GH6, for example, relied on a contrast-based autofocus, which was pretty slow and not really reliable. Granted, the autofocus of the GH6 was a hundred times better than from my GH4, but it still couldn't hold up. And uh, I gotta admit, I never had a problem with that since I come from the film industry and we always pulled focus ourselves. Or we had an AC who took care of that. So whenever I shot with the GH4 or the GH6, I pulled my own focus. That being said, I am excited to see that the GH7 now has a face detect autofocus system like Sony, like Canon, and I'm excited to test it out and include it in my workflow. I'm thinking of cooler and more exciting camera movements without having to worry too much about the focus. Now, another very cool and exciting feature, as I've mentioned earlier, is the Lumix Lab. App. The GH7 can, like the also newly released S9, save up to 39 LUTs internally, which means you can get already color graded footage for clients or quickly for social media directly out of camera. You just shoot it, you convert it, or you shoot it like in the LUT. Um, I gotta test it out, I'm not quite sure. You send it over to your smartphone, you pop it out on Instagram, wherever. And by the way, if you'd like to see me go over these or other features of the camera in another video, just let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, the GH7 is able to record 32-bit float audio. So what is that? What is 32-bit float audio? Simply put, a 32-bit float audio recording is a digital audio format that uses 32 bits per sample to represent sound, allowing for an extremely high dynamic range and reduced risk of clipping, providing more accurate and detailed sound quality. It can capture very quiet and very loud sounds without distortion. So no matter what's gonna happen, if someone starts yelling and the alarm goes off or they get really, really quiet, no problem, you can recover. Now I know I said this is just going to be a little unboxing and overview of the G7, but I could lose myself completely in all of the technical aspects of this camera. So, you know, I better stop myself here. Now, we're not done, right? There was something more in this box and that's the 12 to 60 millimeter Leica lens. So let's get that out of the box and let's put the box to the side. So, like I said, we have a 12 to 60 millimeter Leica lens, and Leica lenses are known for their superb image quality, and this one is no exception. The focal range is perfect for everything from wide angle shots to close up portrait. Now, why didn't I go with the cheaper Lumix version of the same lens? Why the Leica Panasonic lens? Firstly, this lens is mainly constructed out of metal instead of plastic like the Panasonic one. The Leica lens also has these two switches here to the side for autofocus and manual focus and for image stabilization directly on the lens, which I like because it gives it a more, you know, like tactical feel, if you will. I'm not quite sure if that's actually the right word, but uh, you know what I mean. And lastly, but most importantly for my um, decision is the constant focus. Now I know there's a name for it, but uh, for the life of me, I cannot remember what, what's that called. But essentially with the Leica lens, you can zoom in on a subject, pull focus, zoom back out, and the focus remains the same. So with the Panasonic lens, it'll lose the focus when you zoom back out, if that makes sense. Here's the lens once more. Bam, there we have it. Beautiful setup, beautiful together. And um, I can't wait to try it out. Uh, this setup is bound to deliver some amazing results. So there you have it guys, the unboxing of the Lumix GH7 with the Leica 12-60mm to lens. 
If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. And uh, let me know what kind of content you wish to see and if you'd like to see a more in-depth video to the GH7 in action with the Lumix Lab app or whatever else you'd like to see. Also check out my Instagram at Carbonifilms, I'll put it right here for behind the scenes, upcoming projects and footage taken with the GH7 and more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Ah, let's see, let's see, let's see how this goes. Whew. I'm nervous, why am I nervous?